where over 450 people have been killed as Israel and Palestine are locked in a fresh conflict. Hamas, which controls the Gaza Strip, launched a multi-pronged attack on Israel early on Saturday, with thousands of rockets raining down on Israeli cities. Hundreds of Palestinian infiltrators also swarmed into Israeli region as Israel declared a state of war. Israel retaliated with air raids that tore through the Gaza Strip, raising buildings to rubble. Black smoke and orange flames billowed into the sky as crowds of mourners carried their dead bodies through the streets. Hamas also launched a fresh barrage of 150 rockets towards Tel Aviv late last night. While Hamas said that the group was holding a big number of Israeli captives, including senior officials. Reports quote Hamas officials saying that the group had enough captives to make Israel free all Palestinians. Gaza's dead and wounded are now carried into crumbling and overcrowded hospitals with severe shortages of medical supplies and equipment. Streets are empty apart from ambulances racing to the scenes of airstrikes. Israel has cut the power, plunging the city into darkness. Well, India and other countries of the, of the West, including the United States, denounced the Palestinian attack and pledged support for Israel. And issuing a blunt warning, the U.S. President Joe Biden, in an impromptu speech, said that Israel had the right to defend itself. Iran, meanwhile, has expressed support for Hamas. Across West Asia, there were demonstrations in support of Hamas. With Israeli and U.S. flags set on fire in marches, waving Palestinian flags in Iraq, Lebanon, Syria and even Yemen. Now the fresh escalation comes against the backdrop of surging violence between Israel and Palestinian militants in the West Bank, where a Palestinian authority exercises limited self-rule. Meanwhile, Washington has been trying to strike a deal that would normalize ties between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Now, this was being seen by Israelis as the biggest prize yet in their decades long for Arab recognition, their fight for Arab recognition. The latest escalation in violence may adversely affect the deal that we're talking about here. And for a more comprehensive understanding of the war, our correspondent Jody Cohen sends us this report from a bomb shelter. Take a look. The siren has gone off. I don't know if you can hear in the background what's going on. I'm going into the shelter now. And uh, I expect that I won't just be Renana going into the shelter. Now. Can someone just shut the door? Sorry, I'm just absolutely shaking now. Um, we're now in the sh shelter with my family. And uh, guys, um, weren't expecting this. This is the, uh, we've heard, you know, people are in and out of the shelters all day across Israel. Um, I've spoken to people today who have literally spent the whole day in the bomb shelter, spoken to people in Sderot, which is a community bordering Gaza, where they've had non-stop rockets all day, but also dealing with the Hamas infiltrators literally on the streets outside their apartment building. Just heard a, a thud here that could be of a rocket um, firing or that could be of a missile dome intercepting. But yeah, one of the people I spoke to in Sderot is um, working for the ambulance service and he said that he spent the entire day going around um, dealing with people who were injured but also now collecting bodies from the streets. So it's a very, very serious situation here across Israel. It's a state of emergency. 
And for more on this, uh, we're now being joined by John Blacksland. He's the international security expert, professor in intelligence studies and international security at the Strategic and Defense Studies Center at the Australian National University. And he's joining us live from Washington, D.C. Thanks very much for joining us on We're On, Mr. Blacksland. Good to be with you on this extraordinary set of circumstances. Yes, it's really, uh, it is extraordinary to see what's going on. Um, the the war echoes what happened exactly 50 years ago uh, when the Yom Kippur War happened in October 1973. Uh, it's surprising how uh, unprepared it seems the Israeli Defence Force and the Israeli security apparatus was for this attack. In 1973, the Israelis were caught by surprise they subsequently reformed their intelligence apparatus to essentially try and prevent such a surprise ever occurring again. And of course, uh, 50 years later, Hamas has proved them uh, proved them wrong. They've demonstrated they can be surprised. And this has been a surprising, an extraordinary um, failure on human intelligence, signals intelligence, um, uh, imagery intelligence, open source intelligence, you know, material that can be collected from from the newspapers, from uh, people on the streets, from websites and information like that. It speaks to Hamas being much uh, uh, more savvy than most have given them credit for. There's a sense that they've been learning from what's happened in Ukraine. They've been learning over the last few years from uh, Israeli successes in uh, what they call mowing the grass and clipping the wings of militants operating from the Gaza Strip. Uh, and they have refined their procedures. And of course, they've been actively supported uh, behind the scenes by Iran that has been providing them with uh, munitions and support and financial and military support to enable them to prepare for this day, for this uh, extraordinary day right. where they've launched a very big surprise attack. Right, Mr. Blackstone, unprecedented times. Now, in the latest, U.S. President Joe Biden has promised unwavering support for Israel following the Hamas attack. Uh, what do you think the U.S. currently is doing right now to help Israel? Because from Biden to Blinken, there have been strong statements coming out in support of Israel. So that's right, and it is principally about diplomatic and economic support. Um, Israel is quite uh, robust. It's well able to support itself. And in terms of munitions, this is not the kind of war of 1973. This is not the conventional war of old. This is war amongst the people. Uh, this doesn't require masses of ordnance. This requires a much more deft approach. Israel is actually very well equipped to handle this. But of course, the danger is that uh, this war could actually expand considerably further. Uh, we know that Iran has been actively supporting Hezbollah in Lebanon to the north of Israel. And of course, in Syria, uh, the uh, Iranians have been active as well. So uh, the Israelis face significant threats, not just in and around Gaza and from the missiles fired into Israel from there and the operatives now loose uh, and causing havoc in southern Israel. They need to be mindful of the risk of the war escalating with a potential similar kind of rocket barrage coming out of Hezbollah. We know that uh, southern Lebanon is absolutely like a powder keg. It's got uh, masses of armaments, uh, precision munitions and ballistic missiles uh, that the the uh, that the uh, Hezbollah forces have acquired through Syria from Iran. And that is deeply worrying. So when Benjamin Netanyahu thinks about what he can do in response, he has to be mindful of what could happen if he commits too many of his forces into responding to the situation in Gaza. Right, Mr. Blacksland, Israel has now launched Operation Iron Swords, but critical analysis of uh, this conflict is happening at real time, with some experts calling this a colossal intelligence failure on part of Israel. What is your assessment of this? Uh, this is a huge disappointment for the, uh, you know, erstwhile uh, lauded intelligence apparatus of Israel. Uh, Israeli intelligence has been world renowned for its expertise in uh, staying one step ahead of its adversaries. Uh, and Hamas has humiliated uh, the Israeli intelligence apparatus uh, as a result of this uh, incident. So there's no question that this is deeply humiliating. There's a deeper question here too about wh why Hamas is doing this, because we know, everybody knows that Israel has the capability to 
uh, cause enormous damage to Hamas and to uh, re re uh, seek retribution on those who've launched this attack. It might take some time for this to unfold completely. Uh, so you have to ask yourself, well, why would Hamas be doing this? It's very clear that with the Abraham Accords, Israel has been very effective at mustering support and defusing the criticism of a number of the states in the Middle East and North Africa, uh, stretching from Morocco across to Jordan and, and south to Egypt. Um, and so for Hamas, they've been the strong holdouts for recognising Israel. Uh, there was talk about Saudi Arabia possibly recognising Israel and coming to a peace agreement. Hamas has been trying to unsettle that, prevent that from happening and to basically rail against any uh, reconciliation between Israel and the, the, the Islamic world in the Middle East. Uh, and the question now is, will the uh, government of Benjamin Netanyahu react savagely enough to warrant the Hamas's investment in the cause? In other words, have they triggered enough reaction from Israel to engender the kind of uh, shock and uh, 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 re reproach, if you like, towards Israel for overreaching. Um, there's no question domestically in Israel, there will be a lot of uh, desire to push back and to punish Hamas uh, disproportionately to what's happened, or even proportionately. I mean, the thing is that the images of Muslim people being, right. and particularly Palestinians, being attacked, being harmed, uh, is what the Hamas... Uh, leadership would no, will no doubt be looking to capitalise upon um, and to then use that to fan the flames of anger and resentment against Israel, undermine the Abraham Accords, derail the talks with uh, Saudi Arabia and bolster the prospects of Iran. And this is the other thing that's really unsettling because the ramifications go well beyond the Gaza Strip. They go well beyond Israel. They go well beyond the bounds of the neighbouring states uh, to Iran. And of course, we know Iran has been actively involved in supporting Russia. So the, the connections, the, the, the knock-on consequences of this conflict are profound. Right, Mr. Blackson, I was just coming to that, that the speculation also grows regarding the timing of this attack. Hamas attack comes as a, as a peace deal between Saudi, Israel and the US gained momentum. That's right. And so this is, uh, I think, the most compelling reason for why Hamas has timed this for now. It's a reminder to the Middle Eastern countries of the very humiliating uh, defeat of uh, the combined Arab armies, if you like, uh, following the initial successes of the, the surprise attack in the Yom Kippur War of 1973. Remembering that in 1973, uh, uh, the Israelis were caught by surprise. They didn't expect Egypt to attack from the south. They didn't expect that there'd be multiple front attacks. Uh, they thought it was uh, all just exercises and that they had very good intelligence to lead them uh, to make judgments about what was going to happen. They were proved wrong. Um, and I think also what we're seeing here is Hamas seeking to overturn that uh, legacy of, uh, of the last couple of decades of rapprochement with, with Israel to try and spike the relationships, if you like, to make that hatred that's very evident on the streets of places like Egypt and Jordan and Morocco and other countries, an enormous sympathy towards Palestine. But at the political, at the political elite level, there's been a recognition that you've got to try and make things work. And Israel has been working very, very hard over the last few years to mend bridges and right. to build ties that could make that work. Very difficult for Israel now to be successful in its counterattacks without generating that backlash across the Middle East as well. Absolutely, Mr. Blackson. My last question to you before we let you go now. Reports suggest that U.S. is mulling enhanced intelligence sharing with Israel. But my question is that how do you look at former U.S. President Trump's statement uh, wherein he said that the U.S. lacks leadership and weighs in on Israel, blaming Biden without evidence for indirectly funding the attacks? So the Trump-like accusations against the Biden administration are not surprising. Uh, Trump made similar accusations against his predecessor, Barack Obama, for being soft on uh, terrorism and for presenting an image that 
encouraged ex uh, react reactions from uh, organisations that took advantage of American uh, apparent weakness. Um, but it, look, it's a, it's an easy cheap shot for the former president to make against President Biden. Uh, president Biden's got a lot on his plate. Um, and he, let's not forget the Biden government, the Biden administration and the uh, government in Israel under Benjamin Netanyahu have strained relations. So Trump is a supporter of Netanyahu. He's mindful that like Golda Meir, who was prime minister in 1973, Netanyahu could suffer significant political damage over this as well, because this happened on his watch. He's supposed to be the strong guy. He's supposed to be the, the guy who's strong on security right. and uh, holding back on, on extremism. And it happened on his watch. So Golda Meir lost office after this in 1973. There, there's a, big, a huge question mark hanging over Benjamin Netanyahu after this as well. Right, Mr. Blackslin. Thank you very much for taking our time and joining us on Weon on this. Good to be with you. Thanks very much.